That's a pit bull, mama. You can't fight You can't fight that big old pit bull. You can't fight that big pit bull. What is wrong with you? Mama. That's a pit bull. Why you let why your leg kicked up? Mama, that's a pit bull. Why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? Mama! That dog wasn't bothering us. She said it was too close, Daddy. Y'all think it's a game? You love Jesus! You love Jesus? Is Jesus your daddy? You love Jesus? Her loving Jesus? You love Jesus? Let me look over there and make sure he You love Jesus? Is Jesus your daddy? I love Jesus! Look, Jesus, your daddy, mama. Look, that's how we need to be. She's looking back at me for my approval. You did good. You did good, you little rat. She got her butt spanked last night. Man, my wife, we got a, a rug in our home. My wife came home and she was trying to love on Seven and Boaz. And Boat Seven growled at him and was uh, real aggressive, and she got a little butt whoop. I heard her feelings, mm. and that's how we need to be, right there. Mm. This is an illustration how you should be. You should be watchful. You should be vigilant. You should Romans five, First Peter five eight says, "Be sober and be vigilant, for your adversary, the devil, walketh around like a roaring lion." Seeing who he may devour. You need to be sober. You need to be vigilant. You need to be watchful. See how she was watching. <clears throat> when we go somewhere, I'm always, I'm born again. I'm a Christian. Thank you, Jesus. It's my free gift of salvation. The free, the free gift. But it doesn't mean that I don't watch my surroundings. That, oh, the Lord will take care of it. Yes, he will. But I'm going to take care of it. I'm his hands, mouth, and feet. Ezekiel 3.16 says, Behold, I've made you a watchman over Israel. A watchman. And if you see a brother in their sin <clears throat> or a sister and you warn them not, their blood I will require on your hands. <clears throat> okay? Once you warn them, you've delivered your soul. You've washed your hands clean. Okay? It says, behold, see, if you're a Christian, our job is to be watchful, to be vigilant, to be led by the Holy Ghost, okay? <clears throat> when you pray, Father God, your will be done right now, Lord Jesus. Father God, today, right now, I declare this day, your day, it's holy. Every day is holy to me. Every day is the Lord's day. But when you say, Father God, open my eyes let me see the error of my ways, Father God. Then you accept that forgiveness. Last night, whoa, man, thank you, Jesus. Man, I, I was going to reach out to one of our sisters. <clears throat> her, her husband's in jail. It's a guy I met through Life on the Rock, preaching over at the Cofield unit. He came to me and he said, Robert, brother, shook my hand. And when I was preaching the sermons, every scripture I'd start, he would finish. Every scripture. I mean, I've watched God's anointing over this young man. He came home and he said, man, I'm going to make a vow to you. I'm going to make a vow to you that when I come home, you'll hear from me, okay? <clears throat> and he did that. He came home. He reached out to Charles, to me, to anyway, but he didn't stay in the church. He came home and started chain smoking cigarettes and, 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 and didn't walk in the spirit. He forgot about the vow that he made. Dibbled and dabbled, got caught in sin. You know, I ministered to him. I ministered to him. Anyway, the Bible says it, man, in, in Timothy. 
having had escaped the pollutions of this world through the faith and knowledge that is in him, and then be overtangled. Watch this. It says, having had escaped the pollution. Let me get my, my mobile pulpit out. Watch this. In Timothy, it says, having had, my crew's getting here, so I'm going to have to wrap this up pretty quick. Second Timothy, look what it says right here. Second Timothy 2. For after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, they are again entangled and overcome. That means you're entangled by Satan. You've heard, God's delivered you from your, your sin. He's delivered you from drug addiction, pornography, anger, gambling, whatever your secret sin was, whatever your blatant sin was. God's delivered you from that sin. Now watch this. But see, for after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end with them is worse than the beginning. For it would have been better for them not to know the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandments delivered unto them. Then as it happened on the, according to the true proverb, a dog is returned to its vomit and a pig gets back in the mud again. Now watch this. In other words, let me show you one more example. In Galatians chapter 4, Look what Galatians says. It says, After had been delivered from the weak and beggarly ailments of the world, ye will not go back. Now watch this. Galatians says, Now, let me find it real quick. It's not something I always preach. Galatians, For we know that after you have known God, watch this, For we know, Galatians Four, nine, and now after you have known God, rather of or known of God, see God knows you, how then ye again turn to the beggarly elements where unto you you desire to be in bondage again. So in other words, he's talking about the freedom that is in Christ, amen. Then God has delivered you from bondage, from slavery, and then look what it says. But now, after you have known God, or rather are known of God, how then are you again turned to the weak and beggarly elements whereon you desire to be in bondage? God has delivered you. He's pulled you out of the pig pen, okay? Why would you go back? Like for me, I'm speaking for myself. I came from three generations of rot gut alcoholics. I'm talking about drug addicts, drug dealers. I don't glorify that past. That's B.C. But why in the world I haven't thank you, Jesus, by God's grace and mercy, I haven't drank in 16 years. I don't say that I'm an alcoholic. I do not say that. The Bible tells me in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, therefore that if anyone be in Christ, behold, he's a new creature, he's a new creation, all old a things that pass away become new. Proverbs 27, 3 and says, as a man thinketh in their heart, so are they. Matthew 12, 34, abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So today the Bible, I, I, I identify myself as being born again, a new creature in Christ. I don't acknowledge the fact that if I drink again, history repeats itself. Look at her now. She's done her job. She'll just sit right there now. Sit on daddy's shoulder while he's preaching. Now watch this. I don't say I'm an alcoholic. I recognize I have allergic reaction to alcohol. It's a generational curse. It's a bloodline generational curse. I do know if I drink, I'm allergic to alcohol. How do I know that? I got this from Sister Nikki Fisher. Because every time I drink, I break out in handcuffs. I break into cop cars. I break into prisons. I break into probation sentences. Amen. Now watch this. I, I break into places I don't need to be in. Could Used to be other people's homes. Normally drug dealers. Now watch this. Brother David Knight said he had a drug problem. He had a, a drug problem. Every time he did drugs, he got drug into cop cars, drug into probation, revocation, violation, drug into Texas penitentiaries. 
See, he had a drug problem. God has delivered him from a drug problem. Now watch this. After you've escaped the pollutions of this world through the faith and knowledge that is in him. Back to this gentleman. I go to, I've never been to Green Bay in my entire life just to do one-on-one -on -one counseling through the, through the um, visitation behind the glass. Yesterday's Thursday. That's when they have their general Tarrant County chapters can walk through. Thank you, Jesus. I was obedient to the spirit. Only God could do this. I went home, got my truck. Drove down there. I got some mechanic and trucks in my pants in my truck. My wife don't like them because they're too baggy. That's not her business. It's mine. I like them because when I'm mechanic and are doing yard work, I got room to move around in. So they were in my truck because I was going to do some mechanic and work, right? Now watch this. I go up there, visit Pastor Daniel. I visit Daniel Madrid. And I said, man, I'm fixing to walk around there and go. The gate was locked. So I had to walk around, drive around. Then I... It, Walk up to the door, the guy looks and says, you can't wear jogging pants. It's business casual. Thank you, Jesus. I go outside, put my pants on, take my jogging pants off, put my pants on. Then I walk in, first person I see is Brother Jay. He's in a holding tank, just got in a fight, nose broke. I minister to him, he's crying, he's broken. And I said, man, I minister to him through the crack. I, everything we do, I ask permission for. I asked the officer, can I minister to him? He said, absolutely. Then, as I'm walking away, the officer turned the door, and he said, you can go to the tanking council, and you can go minister to him there. I go over there, pray over him, minister to him. It was like one-on-one -on -one for a long time. Before I left, roll call. Y'all want to pray? Step up. Then six, eight men came for prayer, and I ministered to them. It's not me, it's Jesus. But the thing, back to my brother Jay, and not just Jay, myself included, when you make a vow to God and you don't do it, and you let those enemies back in with drug addiction, you walk away from your prayer closet, you get away from your Bible, you get away, there's me, I'll go, go play. Now, go, go. My brother, Omar just got here, he's got his dog. This is what I want you to understand. Yako! Look at that little rascal. There goes Seven. She's going to chase him down. He don't want to play with her. They used to fight and play when they were puppies. This is what I want you to understand. When you make a vow to God, honor that vow. Do not delay to pay it. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, his death, burial, and resurrection, that's why I preach these sermons. Man, I prayed over him. I loved him. I ministered to him, but he was making excuses, blaming everybody else. And I'm, you just can't tell me now. I said, look, Jay, I reached out to you, bro. I offered you money. I've given you money. We loved you. Me and Charles reached out. He's blaming everybody else. Everybody else. Until you acknowledge your sin, until you repent with a godly sorrow, with a godly sorrow. In 2 Corinthians 7, 10, it says, Godly sorrow brings forth repentance unto salvation. Worldly sorrow, that's just crying because you got caught, brings forth death, right? Godly sorrow brings forth salvation unto repentance. Worldly sorrow brings forth death. So let's pray. Let's cover them in prayer. You got to be watchful, just like that little rat. You got to honor the Lord with your mind, with your mouth, with your conversation, with your thought process. So, Father God, right now, in the name and blood of Jesus, Father, teach us to be like my little dog, Seven, to be watchful, to be vigilant, to be on look. And then at this very split second, praise you, O God. Father, I give you all the glory, all the honor, all the praise, for it's all about you, Father. Father, I love you. I praise you. I thank you. I ask this message, Father God, would touch somebody out there struggling with drugs or alcohol that's feeling beat up tore up from the floor up. They would invite you to come in. They would accept you as their Lord and Savior. They would seek godly counsel. You don't go to a mechanic that does not know how to fix his own car to get him to work onto your car. You don't go to somebody broke and ask them for financial advice. So Father God, I pray that this message would touch somebody. I pray that those Jay and those six men I ministered to last night would accept it. walk in you, Father God. Walk in you talk in you, move in you. 
Father, I love you. I praise you. I thank you. I lift your holy name up, Father God, for you alone are worthy to be praised. I was telling Brother Frankie a while ago, I would love to be like Mary, to sit around all day long at Jesus' feet and pray and meditate and read scriptures. But now I got to go to work. I get to go to work. Thank you, Jesus. God bless y'all. I love y'all, man. Y'all have a blessed day. Jesus loves you. Accept the free gift of salvation. Share this message with somebody. Brother Charles is going to be preaching Spirit of Truth on the 23rd of this month. God bless y'all, man. Y'all keep us covered in prayer. Y'all cover Jay in prayer, Daniel in prayer, cover all of us in prayer. Father God, we love you. We thank you. We praise you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless y'all. Today is Friday. Little mama said, what are you doing? Y'all have a blessed day.